Isn't worshiping the Lord just wonderful? I mean, you, you know, you may feel like garbage before you got here, but it's got, you, those feelings go. They go. You know, and, and as your heart, re- when you touch God's heart, he touches yours. You know, many times you get healed just because there's a heart exchange. You know? In Matthew 16, <clears throat> pour your swords out. Training. Training for reigning. Glory to God. Matthew 16, 13. <clears throat> Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat and what you eat is what you become. So if I speak light, I eat light, demons begin to flee. Amen. Glory to God. You know, as we were worshiping, um, uh, I saw cocoons. And, and the Lord shared with me about when you become a believer, an unbeliever, you know, you, unbelievers are uh, caterpillars. When they become a believer, they be, the first stage they go into is a cocoon where there's a, a transfiguration. And as you worship is when you break out. And he said, too many of my children are still in the cocoon. So they can't receive what he's trying to get them because they're in the cocoon. So you've got to break out. Everyone say break out. Break out. And when you break out, it's a whole other realm. Why? Because you get wings. Amen? Now you're able to soar. And the word says that. It says these are the part of the benefits. Bless the Lord all my soul, right? And all is with him and he bless his holy name. And forget not the benefits. What's he do? He forgives you your iniquities, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, rescues us from a life of destruction. My goodness. Heals our bodies. And what does it say? Renews our youth like the eagle and puts good things in our mouth. Starts with good things in your mouth, ends with good things in your mouth. Amen? So praise is continually in your mouth. So you're always speaking light. No matter where you are, whether you're in a store, what, no matter where, when that secular music comes on, just yell, hallelujah. Everybody around you might pass out, but it don't matter. You're cool. You can pray for them then afterwards. <laughs> hallelujah. <clears throat> Some people need the hell frightened out of them to make room for heaven. Amen. Verse 13, let's read it. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon, Bar- Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Anointed One, right? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The eternal presence and power. I, this still blows me away. 23 years, and it still blows me away. The eternal presence of God Almighty, the power of God Almighty, and the truth of God Almighty came into this realm. He he split a dimensional opening for me and you to have fellowship. It's called the eternal port. That's why he's called, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That is called the tabernacle. It's it's an eternal port. Amen. We got to stop thinking religiously and start thinking kingdomly. Amen. I think Jesus wrote a lot of sci-fi stuff, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was there. <clears throat> he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered him and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, this is very powerful. This is so profound and powerful. Jesus is right there, right with him, right? Jesus, known as the Father also. Amen? But how many of y'all can be in multiple places at once? Because he is God, you know. So you can talk to me and you at the same time. (laughs) Jesus is right there. But something occurred that he heard the voice from another dimension that came through. 
And Jesus knew, and he said something to him. He said, you heard this from my father. The father spoke to you. See, there's an area between the difference of illumination and revelation. What God gave Peter was a nugget. Not chicken nugget. Amen. Amen. This was a golden nugget and not from Golden Corral. This was a golden nugget. This was a nugget that was released from heaven. These are called heavenly nuggets that release from God. See, there's a difference between a nugget, which is gold, amen? Nuggets reflect, a uh, gold will reflect, won't it? It causes illumination. But when it's refined, it's transparent. And in that, there's a revelation. Does everybody got it? It's a message within. And this is where God wants to get us to, into the place where you and I are getting heavenly nuggets. Because, see, there's a difference between illumination and revelation. Amen. Jesus was right in front of him. Remember, he was a reflection. He was there. But there was a revelation that came. Is everybody with me? Now watch this. And he said, Blessed are you, Samuel Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Heavenly nugget. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. On the anointing. Amen. Everything's built on the anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. All foundation is on the anointing. Then everything is built from the foundation. And I will give you the what? Keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whoa. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. These are keys that you and I have. And these keys will also assist you in releasing heavenly nuggets. Does everybody understand? Heavenly nuggets of gold. Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? Amen. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. What does he say? I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, and this is where the church has been. The church has been lukewarm. There's not enough hot. Church has become traditional. It's more of a place of entertainment than a place of worship. And God is changing that. <clears throat> he said, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. In other words, they were relying on their own stuff. Their own talents, their own abilities, their own bank accounts. Why? Because they lost first love, didn't they? They began to sway. They didn't realize that they were drifting. He says something very powerful in verse 18. What did he say? I counsel you to what? Buy. That means there's a price. What is the price? Cooperation. Amen. You must press in. I counsel you to buy from me what? Gold. And what kind of gold? Refined. What's he saying? The price is to get what? Revelation. By what? Heavenly nugget. Does everybody get this? He's saying, I want you to buy this heavenly nugget that's refined. Because in that refined nugget is a revelation. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich in white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may what? See. Let me tell you, revelation brings sight. It always brings sight. See what? See deeper. Remember, faith is spiritual sight. God speaks, you see. Amen. God speaks, you hear, you see, then you do. 
There's no such thing as blind faith. That's called a spirit, a spirit of assumption or sin of assumption. We do not assume. We don't do anything. Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. Amen? We don't assume. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be what? Zealous on fire. And what? Repent. In other words, turn from your lukewarmness. Behold, I stand at the door, knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who has an ear. He who has an ear. See, there's a place where if, if, you're in, if your intent, if your intention is to follow, you will hear. Does everybody got it? If your intention is to follow, you're going to begin to hear. If your intention is not really to follow, then you're not going to be able to hear. You'll hear everything else. Go to Exodus 37. As we were worshiping, I saw the Lord doing something and it was pertaining to his teaching. It's in verse 1, let's read it together. Then Benzeli made the ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits was its length and a cubit and a half its width and a cubit and a half its height. He overlaid it with what? pure gold, the tabernacle, everything in the holy place, in the most holy place, was overlaid with pure gold. Everything was covered with gold. It was associated with reflection. So when they lit the candles, when they lit the candles and they were reflected off the wall, it was known as um, the seven uh, attributes of the Holy Spirit when they lit these candles. And it would be reflecting off the wall. Everything was a reflection. The holy place. And then the Ark of the Covenant with the cherubim, everything was gold. Either pure gold and hammered gold or, or, or everything was overlaid with gold and, re, and reflection. Why? Because it was purified. Does everybody understand that? It was refined. And in this, it, of course, we know gold is precious, isn't it? It's it's. it's worthy it's it has great value doesn't it amen and so everything in the tabernacle was associated with gold pure and while you and i get these nuggets so when we press in and we get to this place where god begins to release a heavenly nugget to me and you what he does is he takes a piece of the tabernacle and he sends it and it automatically replaces itself. He's taken a piece of the tabernacle and he sends it and automatically replaces it. Why? Because he is the tabernacle. He's actually giving you a piece of him. Does everybody get this? And, it, and then all of us, and I saw him in the, in the holy place where that's where the priesthood is. Amen. And then the most holy places were kingship at warriors. And I saw him in the holy place taking parts of the gold and just taking it and releasing it and it would just go right back to its original form. And he said, this is how I'm sending my nuggets to my children. Does everybody get this? Because it's from him. And see, we want revelation. The word says that without revelation, the restraints are taken off. In other words, restraints of what? Restraining your flesh. Is everybody okay? I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but you can read it. Exodus 37, read the whole thing, it's powerful. <laughs> and 1 Chronicles 28 talks about it too. This is good. Do you have that visualization? 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9.
<clears throat> Same thing when Solomon's temple was built. It was built with precious gold. All overlaid. In verse 9, <clears throat> David is saying, And as you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father, and serve him with a what? Loyal heart and with a willing mind. A loyal heart and willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the what? Intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. In other words, if you truly, he says, seek me with all of your heart, your mind, and your strength. And as you seek him, believe me, he releases heavenly nuggets. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary, to be strong and do it. Then David said to his son Solomon, the plans, everyone say plans, for the vestibule, its houses, its treasures, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat, and the plans for all that he had by the Spirit. By what? The Spirit. So who brings the nuggets to you? The Holy Spirit. And the plans of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, of all the chambers all around, of the treasures of the house of God, and of the treasures for the, de de for the dedicated things. Also for the division of the priests and the Levites, for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the articles of service in the house of the Lord. He gave gold by weight for things of gold. For the articles used in every kind of service, also silver for articles of silver by weight for all the articles used in every kind of service. The weight for the lampstands of gold and their lamps of gold by the weight of each lampstand and its lamps for the lampstands of silver by weight for the lampstands of its lamp according to the use of each lampstand and so on. So again, here we have gold and we know that it is great value. It also can be molded in multiple ways. Amen. And it also brings a place of reflection. Reflection. Is everyone okay? <coughs> Glory. And Deuteronomy 8, while we're here. Uh, <coughs> Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and what? Multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to what? Humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. How many of y'all know God tests you? Amen. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with what? Manna. Which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but every nugget from God. But man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So what was coming down from heaven, it was known as manna, wasn't it? But see, you and I eat a different manna. Amen? That manna is called heavenly nuggets for me and you. <clears throat> Not to live by bread alone, but, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Are you ready to go into the good land and possess it? That is the promises of God that's awaiting me and you all the time. He says, if you do this, see, once you obey, he's asked us to do something. When you do it, he releases the promise. So you're stepping in the promised land after your obedience. 
And in that promised land, it's an opportunity to go after him with all of your heart and receive heavenly nuggets. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and springs that flow out of valley and hills, and a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. How many of y'all want to lack nothing? Amen. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. You have eaten and are full. Then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. How many of y'all know God's in a multiplying business? Amen. Amen. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt known as the house of bondage. How many of y'all came out of bondage? Amen. Amen. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents, boy, did we associate with them, scorpions, sorcery, witchcraft, you know, and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the Plenty rock uh, as revelation. Amen. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and might of my hand has gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Then it shall be if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Now, again, in this, God is trying to always get us something, isn't he? But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Again, the first thing he's always trying to steal is your identity. Amen? He wants to kill you. Why? So you can't fulfill your mission. Amen? So he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can kill you, he can des destroy your mission. So there's that place where you are, are in your relationship with the Lord. That's what he wants to be. He wants to be Father, daughter, father, son. That's why Jesus came as the, that example. He's always trying to get something to me and you. He's trying to release something. Why? He wants to encourage us. Amen. He wants to empower us. And he wants us to see deeper. Everyone say deeper. He wants us to go to a deeper place. Not only in relationship, but see things before they happen. Amen. See things. And that can happen when he releases special nuggets. Look at, look what Peter, he said, man, you're the Christ. All the other disciples were hanging around. No one said he was the Christ. And look at what Peter went through. Did he deny Jesus? Amen. Three times. Amen. But he came back, didn't he? Amen. Because he was also a man after God's heart, just like David was. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> Remember, to hear is to believe, and the intent to follow, if your intention is to follow, it will always result in hearing. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> I can see these nuggets falling out of the sky now, man. <laughs> That's why, you see, it's, it's just like going to, uh, you know, you build, you get stronger in certain things, right? 
So you, instead of carrying one bag of groceries, you can carry two. So that's why we worship, to get stronger in the Lord so you can carry more things from God. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 2, is everybody there? In verse 1. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not, did not what? Come with the excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. I want you to know that this wisdom from above is a special nugget. But we speak wisdom of God in a what? Mystery. How many of y'all know mysteries are heavenly nuggets? The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of for whose glory? Our glory. Ours. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written. What does it say? I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, nuggets. Amen. Everyone say nuggets. I want heavenly nuggets. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Whoa. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of a man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God. So we see that the mysteries, these mysteries are nuggets of illumination or revelation. They're mysteries that come from heaven. They're revealed. Most of the mysteries, like Paul prayed in the spirit quite a bit. He prayed in tongues all the time. And as he, pray, God, as he prayed in tongues, God would release the mysteries. He was releasing nuggets. And these are refined ones. These were not illuminated. Amen? These are refined. Why? Because when they came, they came... And they were transparent. And every nugget, he was able to get revelation out of it, which was a mystery that was hidden. See, the word of God brings illumination. But the spirit of God brings revelation. Amen? Is everybody okay? Look at, watch this. Acts chapter 2 and 14. Acts chapter 2 and 14. That's why there's a lot of people that know the word of God. Amen? But they really don't have revelation. Because when revelation comes, restraints maintain. It keeps you positioned. Acts 2.14. Is everybody there? And that's where true identity, in that maintaining your identity of who you are in Christ, not what the world says, not what you used to be, you're brand new. See, when God speaks, his words don't stop. His word is movement. That's why you are a new creation in Christ. Again, 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 and again, and again, it doesn't stop. It's his word that holds everything. Amen? So if I'm a new creation in Christ, that means I'm a new creation in Christ again. I'm a new creation. It never stops. Constant motion, movement. The whole thing is, is if the enemy can convince you that there is no movement, does everybody understand this? He can get you in a stagnant place. And you know what catches up with you? The old. If you stay, do you ever step on uh, one of those escalator things? You know, those are weird, aren't they? Man, they really, whoa, oh, you know. Anyways, I, I always like challenging those things, so I'll moonwalking. 
stay in one place, you know. If you start going backwards, you stay in one place, right? It's not until you get with the flow. So everything is still catching up to you from behind. And that's how the old catches up to the, because the enemy can only attack you from your past, right? So if we're constantly in the flow of moving in the spirit, in the arena where we, we truly are in movement of God, where we're seeking, where we're worshiping, where we're, we're looking, we're waiting, where our intent is to follow, we're waiting, we're trying to hear, we're trying to see. Does everybody get this? You're in a movement state. It's called action, isn't it? You're in motion. And it causes growth. But it's when you're stagnant and everything catches up from behind you. Then you begin to look behind. And he begins to speak to you. And then people, some people regret certain things. And people, guilt, condemnation, fear, anxiety, stress. And all of a sudden, all your old stuff catches up. Even some of your old sicknesses, all your old garbage catches up. Amen? Next thing you know, you find yourself in a puddle of affliction. And you're going, oh, and you just need to get out and shake off the dust and go forward. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Acts 2.14. Are we there yet? Amen. Let's speak this together, please. But Peter, oh, here we are, Peter. What, did Peter have revelation? Amen. Amen. And guess what? Look at this. He's the one that stood up on the day of Pentecost. When everybody was like, what's these guys? They're all drunk, man. You got to, what's the matter with them? Remember, 120 showed up at the upper room. 500 were invited. Amen. All of them, the rest of them started denominations. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Peter, standing up with the 11, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and maid servants... I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Does everybody understand? Listen, dreams and visions are nuggets. God releases dreams and visions as nuggets. These are heavenly nuggets for me and you. They'll either produce a, a illumination or a revelation. But I'm telling you, God tries to bring revelation to me and you all the time. All the time. Why? Because it keeps the restraints on. There's a connection. See, the enemy wants to disconnect us. Anything that he can do, he can try and disconnect. People get disconnected and don't even know they're disconnected. Why? Because when revelation is distant, you can be sure there's disconnect. Amen? Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. See, when there's a disconnect, you don't even know you're drifting. Everybody else does, though. <laughs> Amen? You don't even know. Why? Because blindness comes. You're too busy yakking. Your, your mouth begins to speak more. You begin to Look at others, everything. You, why? Because you're no longer in the spirit and you think, and, and that deception thinks you're, you're in the spirit, but you're not. Why? Because your, your mouth will show it. Your attitude will promote it. Amen? And your flesh will expose it. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1, let's speak it. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of what? Understanding and the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. 
in whom are hidden all the treasures, everyone say treasures, of wisdom and knowledge. Are those nuggets? You betcha. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, everyone say beware. Lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. In other words, we want to be taught by the anointing, not by a man. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Complete where? In him. Everyone say, I'm complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power in him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of christ buried with him in baptism which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of god who raised him from the dead ephesians chapter 3 ephesians 3 understanding the knowledge of the mysteries of God. In verse 1, please. Ephesians 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by what? Revelation he made known to me the what? Mystery. Does everybody understand that? Through revelation, mystery comes. Things that have been hidden. Why? Because they're unfolded. Oh, glory. <clears throat> how by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which, is, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. And it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. I'm going to go somewhere real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 1. Let's speak this together. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. In other words, we are servants to the anointing. The anointing does not serve you. We serve the anointing. Amen. And stewards of what? Mysteries. Of, we are stewards of the mysteries from the heavenly nuggets. I mean, there's that time, man, you know you just got a nugget. It's like, whoa. Awesome. You know, life-changing. Encouraging. Whoa. Whoa. It wasn't a illumination. It was revelation. Amen. And let me tell you about revelation. It'll bring humbleness to you, not pride. Always brings you to become more humble. It brings more reverence and honor and respect to the Lord. Amen. Does everybody get that? So we are, um, we are servants to the anointed and we are stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, in verse 2, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by any of you or by human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord, because his relationship with the Lord. Does everybody get that? So we are stewards of the mystery. There's a storehouse of treasures, gems of wisdom, all kinds of things that God wants to release to me and you. So you can begin to expect certain things to bounce off your head, you know. 
Get it. Get ready. You know, believe, receive. Execute. Seek it. Ask. Call those things that are not as though they are. They're waiting for you. There's so many things waiting for us. But you know who gets, what gets in our way? We do. We do. Our own will, our own desires. That's why he says, deny yourself. You got to get behind you. Amen. Get behind me, me. <laughs> it's called self, the old man. <laughs> oh, glory. In Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Saul, who became Paul. And Saul still breathing threats and murder. Has everybody got this? Amen. Verse 1. Murder against the believers. Murder. He was killing them. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. And asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were Christians, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem so that they could be tortured or killed. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a nugget fell out of heaven and he got knocked out. K.O. It was a heavenly K.O. And the heavens rejoiced. <laughs> and he, and look at, and he journeyed, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground, told you, K.O. And heard a voice saying to him, now, when this nugget hit him, it opened up. <laughs> and the voice came out said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Let me tell you, when revelation comes like that, man, you go, what do you want me to do? What can I do? What? I'm yours. I'm, whatever. And can we do this again? So you want another and you want another, and you want more, and you don't want to stop until you're nugged out. <laughs> you want to get K.O., heavenly K.O. <laughs> Glory. You know, you and I are called to be priests and kings. Amen? Amen. I'm glad you got that. Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Heavenly knockout. That's what happened to Saul. Psalm 25 and verse 12. Who is the man that what? Fears the Lord. Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity. And his descendants shall inherit the earth. Verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who what? Fear him, reverence and honor. That secret is called heavenly nugget. Has everybody got that? They're released. And he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, and he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Again, he shows he will release secrets to those who fear him, reverence him, honor him. In other words, he will release heavenly nuggets. And Proverbs 25. Nuggets from heaven. Verse 
You'll never look at a chicken nugget the same. You'll look for a revelation in every bite. <laughs> Proverbs 25, in verse 2, let's speak it together. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to what? Search out a matter. Do you understand that we are called to be priests and kings? It's our responsibility to search things out. Amen? It's our, the more you search, the more he releases. That's the same thing with sowing. The more you sow into the spirit, the more you reap. Amen? The glory of kings is to, it's our responsibility to search out heavenly nuggets. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. Psalms 19. Remember, illumination is a reflection of the nugget. Revelation is when it is refined because the message is inside. So that's why we count it all joy, don't we? When we go through trials and tribulations, what's God doing to me and you? Refining. See, sometimes he's trying to release things, but we can't interpret them until there's a process because there's an area where he wants you and me to understand his language. And you learn his language, just like going to another country or whatever, you're going to have to hang with someone to help you interpret. And the Holy Spirit's the one that interprets. But most of the times, it's not through words. This is language. This is through impressions. In Psalm 19, is everybody there? Would you, uh, let's start at verse 1. Let's speak it. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. Again, dreams and visions, right? Release nuggets, don't they? There is no speech or, nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And in them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Again, this is where I was sharing with you when I saw that vision of the Lord taking the gold and releasing it. And those were nuggets out of the tabernacle and it would automatically just go right back to its shape. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Everyone say heat. In other words, it means presence. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they what? Than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than any than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warden, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his ears? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. That's people who always talk about, I'm walking in blind faith. That's presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the heat, it says it's perfect. Why? Because heat is what refines, doesn't it? It's like a furnace that refines. And in this, there's a revelation from the heavenly nuggets that God is sending me and you. In this, we've got to understand that this is a place where God wants me and you to get a place where there is more. And we talked about this. We talked about the more project already. But there is a, a, a God has a plan for me and you. That's, so more grace is released. More of his plan is released. There should become a more thirst and hunger. And when you begin to find yourself that you're losing that or, or becoming more lack in that thirst and hunger, you must ask for it. Lord, keep me thirsty and hungry. 
I, mean, I have to ask for that every day. Not only do I ask for more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but thirst and hunger. Thirst and hunger. I ask for that every single day. Lord, I want more thirst and hunger. Keep me thirsty and hungry for you. Keep me thirsty and hungry for your righteousness. Does everybody understand this? Because what you, you, don't, you don't get if you don't ask. And if you constantly, you're asking for that, you're, remember, every day is new. Amen? Yesterday's gone, today's a brand new day. So that's why I have to put down the full armor of God. I have to battle. I have to be a first striker. I've got to seek and wait and look. So we're looking. We're waiting. We're, Lord, what do you want to tell me? I know you want to release something to me. Don't let me miss it. Don't let me miss it. So you got to talk to him. Amen? And I'll close at Hebrews 1. Hebrew, Hebrew today. Hebrew, chapter 1. And verse 1. <clears throat> Supreme revelation of Jesus Christ. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by what? The word of his power, because it's constantly moving. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a, a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And of all the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a what? A flame of, are you a flame of fire? Well, if you're a flame of fire, then you're going to get much revelation. Amen. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the what? Oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed, but you are the same. And your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Has everybody got this? God is still speaking. Amen. He's not stopped speaking. In fact, his voice, his word is still obtaining and moving every day. It's just a matter of getting in the stream, getting in the spirit where you are staying connected. And as you're staying connected and you're seeking, there's a response. And in that response to him, there's a love affair. There's a desire to want to know him more. It's where you can tell him, I love you. I love you. And your heart truly means that you love him. It's a place where not only you can tell him you love him, but you're able to receive his love. See, because many people have a hard time receiving God's love. The only thing that they know is lust. But we've got to step out of the lust realm. Because that's what addiction is, nothing but lust. It's an overwhelming desire. And step in the love realm. It's called the realm of the spirit where there's truly a love. And as you know him even more and more and more, he begins to release things. Amen? Because you are his priests and kings. 
He wants to give you and me more and more and more. So we're moored up. Amen? Nugged out. <laughs> and he's formed in us. Amen? So look, ask, seek, and expect. Expect. Praise God. But if you know you're not in order, then you know, be careful. That might be a, a something besides a nugget coming down on you. You know what I'm saying? Hello. We won't get into that teaching tonight, but anyway. Well, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your precious, precious, precious word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the price of Jesus. Thank you for the seal of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the angels that bear us up. And thank you for turning us into ministering flames of fire. Thank you for all the nuggets that you have released already. We are so grateful. Thank you. And, Dad, we want more. We don't want to be nugged out, Dad. Release. Release to each and every one. Even, even nuggets of revelation and nuggets of illumination to your people. Visit them in dreams and visions. Bring encouragement. Bring your counsel, your correction, and your direction. Bring your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And bring your divine nature that others may see you and us as you release revelation that we may keep the restraints and be protected in the shadow of the Most High. And to Jesus be all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God. Amen.